How you doing ladies and gentlemen? Pop Links and I'm back with another book review. Yeah, so today's book review is Mycelium Running by Paul Stamets. Oh my god. Obviously this is one of my favorite books because later in my life I became extremely interested in mycology, which was really weird. That was one of the subjects that I didn't even know existed when I was in school. Weird, right? I know. And um, somehow later in my life, I became obsessed with it. Like, I, well, scavenging, I read all the books, I watch the documentaries. I've become a fun guy. Like, I don't know how that happened, but I did. Um, and this book right here, where do I start? It, be, it basically teaches all the basics you need to know about fungus and how fungus operates in our ecosystem. Like for instance, 30% of all soil on the planet has mycelium in it. Mycelium is essentially the root system for particular types of fungus. Mushrooms. Um, it's one cell wall thick, so and the biggest organism on the planet, I believe, is a honey mushroom in Oregon, which is a couple thousand football fields. I don't know, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna have the picture right here and show you, it's, it's absurd. That's the biggest organism on the planet. They say mycelium acts like the neural networks of the human brain. So if you, put pictures of the internet and the human brain and mycelium next to each other and you'll see the comparison of the three and they look exactly the same. Hmm, and we already know nature likes to extrapolate off of compl complexity. Like that's like what it does. So if we have a model that works, it's gonna replicate the model across all um, platforms, right? There you go. Now, since mycelium acts like the neural network of the human brain, whatever it encounters, it can collect the information and record it. Hmm. Sure sounds like nature's internet to me, but wait, it gets better. So the mushrooms I'm particularly talking about are saprophytic, are natural decomposers. That means it takes auxilic acid, right? Oxalic acid takes calcium and other minerals in the environment to make calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate breaks down rocks, uh, animal debris, basically anything that can be decomposed in nature, the fungus acts as a saprophytic and breaks it down. And if it wasn't for that, we would have an abundance of dead weight matter all on this planet if it wasn't for the fungus breaking it down. That's a phenomenal thing too. Not only that, they, be, they can be used for medicinal purposes. Medicine, antiviral, anti-cancer, um, immunological properties. Uh, they are making computer parts out of fungus. It's called mycocomputation or mycotechnology because some of these fungus can uh, produce electricity or some of these fungus are attracted to electricity and it can absorb the electricity and hold it within its cell walls and then you can use that for i.e. power. It's crazy, right? They had a particular type of fungus. I'm gonna see if I can. Physerium polycyphalum and that was a slime mold. So what Japan did, Japan made a, a labyrinth made a maze right and it had two sources of food in the maze and they put the slime mold in the the maze or the labor and it found both sources of food avoiding all the dead ends so imagine you being in a labor and they tell you hey we have two we have two chicken dinners in here and you got to go find them but avoid all the dead ends how long would it take you to find both of those dinners you'd be there forever the fact that it found both those dinners in the shortest route too. Can't forget that. It found both those dinners in the shortest route and avoided all the dead ends. So there's, a, there's definitely a hyper intelligence working here, but yet it doesn't have a brain. So 
when we get down to the nitty gritty of what we understand, what intelligence, hyper intelligence really is and how the universe expresses itself in many different forms and intelligence comes in many different forms. And, and until we uh, adjust our perspective lens and understanding about what this really is, then we will never have an understanding of what, and we can't even begin to speculate alien, what alien life would be. That that's I just want to put that out there. Uh, number two, they put a map of their subway system and put that same slime mold in their subway system map. And then it figured out what the shortest routes were in their subway system. So basically, if you know, from point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, the slime mold figure out the best routes to take and it took it and then they remodeled their subway system based off how that slime mold used the most proficient routes insane yeah it's insane you don't have to tell me that i know how crazy that sounds because it just shows you that nature always knows what to do they say that if there's um something in nature that could hurt you the cure is right next to it I remember hearing, if you see poison ivy, normally on the other side of the ivy bush or somewhere in its vicinity is the cure for poison ivy. Like sugar in high doses is toxic, right? But fiber counteracts sugar. So that's why sugar canes are pretty cool because in the middle of the sugar cane is sugar, but it's coated in fiber. So then if you want to look at it in that aspect, it's the poison and the cure for it all in one. Nature never gives you the the bad without the good. It always gives it to you together. So you also can use mushrooms to restore the environment. Sorry, they had one controlled experiment with three different piles of toxic waste. And the toxic waste was used. A chemical, an industrial chemical was used to treat one pile. Um, I forget what other technique they used for the second one, but I think that was chemical based as well. And then the third one, they used fungus. One of them was clean, but it was inhabitable. Like you couldn't go back to it because it was it was just toxic waste. I mean, the area, it did its job, but now it's like a waste of land. The second one, I believe was just a sludge pile still. And the third one was in an environment that was a refertilized or re revived ecosystem because the fungus chewed up all the toxic waste and chemicals inside of that that pile. Then all the birds came to eat the fungus, right? The birds drop poop. Poop have seeds in it, fertilized it. Next thing you know, there was worms, grass, all that. It was crazy. Micro restoration is what it's called, using fungus to restore the environment. That's why it's weird when people say, save the planet, plant trees. That wouldn't necessarily work in some aspects because like we talked about the mycelium, the mycelium creates uh, ectomycorrhizal and endomycorrhizal, depending on what type of fungus we're talking about, relationship with the, the roots of the trees. So if you disrupt that communication and relationship, then you disrupting, you're disrupting thousands of years in a nutrient-based system. So planting a new tree won't help that because now it has to build that relationship back up in which you probably destroyed part of the ecosystem in the process of uprooting or destroying the trees, the trees in the first place. So, but then again, I'm not telling you not to go out and plant trees. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's like, it's deeper than that. It's uprooting the ecosystem. And let's talk about a little, let's talk a little bit about the, mycorrhizal relationship. So, so basically what the mycelium does is it connects all the trees all to each other. And if there's a sapling that's not getting enough sunlight, it'll communicate to another tree like the sapling's not getting enough sunlight. So it'll try to mitigate nutrients from different parts of the, the rainforest to give it to the sapling so it can come up and you know, be, be revitalized. Rhizal relationships are basically a nutrient-based system that the roots and the mycelium form together through co-evolution. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's not parasitic. Parasitic's one-sided. It's a symbiotic relationship. So if there's like a sapling that's not getting enough nutrients, the mycelium will communicate to the trees around it like hey like this little sapling is not getting what it needs to grow you think i could give a little 
take a little bit of what you have and give it to it, sure, do it. And it'll mitigate the nutrients to that sapling so the sapling can grow up to a fruitful tree. They did experiment where they took tomato, tomato plants and they took tomato plants that grew with fungus and then they took tomato plants that grew without fungus. And it's a drastic difference. They got all different types of fungus in the hair that eat chemicals that devour electricity, that dance around fire, like you name it. Live at the bottom of volcanoes, like you. I can't, I can't seem to find it, but I'll post a picture. I'll make sure I post a picture of them growing plants with mycorrhizal relationships and without mycorrhizal relationships. And they're both, it's like a drastic difference. So that proves right there that all these plants that we have in nature would not exist without a symbiotic relationship with fungus. Nor would we. We split from fungus around 750 million years ago. We have more in common with fungus than we do with plants and animals. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> and also I wanted to show you a little bit of the fungus that they have and that they study and what they're good against. So the antibacterial properties, and then it shows you the fungus that are good against antibacterial. Then it does uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-candida, anti they do antioxidant, they do anti-tumor, antiviral, blood pressure, blood sugar moderator, cardiovascular, cholesterol reducer, immune enhancer, kidney toxin, lung respirator, nerve toxin, you get it. So, um, and then they have all the diseases, or sorry, all the diseases right here that we have known cancers for, and then all the mushrooms that work fantastic against these cancers, like eat them. And, but what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that with, in conjunction with the practices we already have established in our medical system, and add mushrooms to whatever treatment you're currently taking, well, you'll X out. There's been numerous research about this. This isn't like something that's not known. This is well known. You just have to do the research. So we have breast cancer. Then it'll show you what mushrooms are good with those type, good against those types of cancer. Then you have cervical. Then you have uh, colorectal. Um, then you have leukemia, liver, exact, you see it. It's, it just lays out so much information. Hepatitis B, herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, HIV, influenza, pox. And then it shows you the mushrooms that will destroy these viruses. Yeah, this book is phenomenal. This is what really like got my wheels turning about how the world really works and what is intelligent life and and then they name all the other mushrooms. Like for instance, lion mane's mushrooms is really good. The fact that lion mane mushrooms look like neurons in the human brain and then literally regrows or grows the brain, shapes it differently. This is how it was explained to me, which is a super good analogy. Think of the habits you form in your life as a field of snow. Each act you do becomes kind of like when you're on a hill and you sled down, you slide down on your, on your sled, you make a path. Each time you do that particular habit, it becomes more entrenched. So that path becomes a deeper and deeper grain, right? It gets more ingrained into what you're doing. You, it becomes more of a habit. So what some of these fungus have the potential to do is clear that whole field of snow and give you a clean slate. So now you can rehabilitate yourself. Now you can explore new options in your life. Now you can think outside the box. Now you can do things that you just wouldn't allow yourself to do based on your conditioning. I know it's a lot to think about, but um, yeah. And on top of that, these things are phenomenal for your health. They offer a lot of immunological properties that what you probably wouldn't get the benefits from anything else. If you're really interested in mycology or learning about mushrooms or micro restoration or the psychological, immunological, antibacterial, antiviral benefits of mushrooms, then I suggest you read Mycelium Running. Phenomenal book. And I just want you 
to like, share, subscribe. And I just want to say you could have been anywhere in the world, but you were here with me and I appreciate it. Peace.